Good morning. Happy Sabbath. God is good. And all the time. I got to be honest, I did not expect that to happen. <laughs> I was about to come up to this pulpit and then they told me to just stay there. <laughs> and say a little bit of an introduction. I did not expect that. <laughs> but that was really amazing and truly, I, I'm truly blessed to be with um, Pastor Stephen, Pastor Walter, and also Pastor Rochelle when I first came back. And they were new to me and uh, I didn't know them very much, but I'm glad I get to know them a lot. And I, I'm so glad to uh, join them in the ministerial journey, especially here in this wonderful church of paradise, <laughs> Paradise Valley. And I want to give just some shout outs. Uh, if they are watching, I want to give a shout out to uh, Pastor Chris. I, I'm so blessed by him as well for teaching me a lot of things in my uh, as a pastor, I should say, and uh, Pastor Darren, Pastor Wally, um, Pastor Jeff, yeah, Pastor Jeff, I cannot forget him, and so many more, so many more pastors, all of them, I should say, and to those who have helped this church grow, you know who you are, most especially to Pastor Will, I cannot forget you and also your lovely wife, thank you. So much, especially when uh, I get to learn in this uh, Kim ministry. That was truly amazing. And to my good friends back in the Philippines, in Enlac, and wherever you are, most especially to my good friends from Pogodpur Ilocos Norte, to my best friends, uh, Maria Mercedes, and also her sister. By the way, today is her birthday, so if you'd like to say really quick, a quick yell and say happy birthday. One, two, three. Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Anna. And most especially, I want to thank God for what He has done in my life. You know, it has been a very tough journey in uh, learning more about Him and preaching to others about Him. But thank God He has been with me and that He has never, ever forsaken me, nor left me. And what I'm going to share to you, my fellow brothers and sisters, is something that we truly need. Not only today, but in every single day of our lives. So if you... Um, Open your Bibles with you. There you go. To Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. I don't have it here, so you got to open your Bibles. So make sure, bring your Bible so that we can all read together. And this verse is truly, these two verses truly meant a lot to me in my uh, journey with Christ. And maybe you, maybe you have read it, or maybe it's your first time. So please, read along with me. I'll be reading it from the New King James Version. So it reads here in Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. In Christ alone. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you so much for giving us this wonderful Sabbath a day where we can rest from all of our works and to focus on you who is the source of happiness 
the source of love and the source of hope. Father, we ask that may you please send your Holy Spirit to dwell within us so that as we will get into the message to your word, we will all be filled with your love and that we may go out of this place and share the good news to all people before your soon return. Thank you, Father, for hearing and answering our prayer. In Jesus' name, let all of God's people say, Amen. The Bible shares a lot of amazing stories about who God really is and what He has done for His children since the beginning when He first created the heavens and the earth. The book of Proverbs, written by Solomon, it is a very beautiful book. It is one of the most wonderful texts about education, wisdom, and advices for everyday life. Not only for the people back in the day, but also for the people of the present day and age. We have been seeing so many things in our own lives, in our families, in schools, in church, in relationships, in our country, and most of all, around the world. And there are times when we feel anxious, when we feel fearful, when we get worried about so many things that are happening around us. And most especially, we are afraid and fearful and anxious about what may happen in our future. My friends, when we feel like this, God is telling us these three simple steps in order to be calm in our chaotic life. And I'll read it once again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. But what do these three steps mean to us, and how can we apply it to our daily lives? The first one is the one that is highlighted. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. What does it mean to trust in the Lord? Regardless of your circumstances, trust God. When you feel anxious or worried about your life or your current life, remember, trust God. When you feel lost, and you don't know where to go in your journey, trust God. When you are doubting about yourself, that you are not good enough, that you are worthless, that you are nothing, trust God. When you feel tired, trust God. When you're going through some tough times in your academic life, relationship life, marriage life, family life, financial life, especially what's going on in this country or in this world with the inf inflation, rising of gas prices, rising of food prices, when you fear about the wars that is going on between nations, countries, friends, families, always remember to trust in the Lord who loves you, just like how God loves Job. You know, in the story, in the book of Job, which was written by Moses, it talks about a character 
named Job, who had everything in his own life, family, livestock, a home, wealth, cattle, and also good health. But later in the story of Job, everything that he has owned, everything that he has had, was wiped away. He lost everything that he has owned. But because of his faithfulness, because of his loyalty to God, no matter what may happen, he stayed loyal. And because of that, because of Job's trust in God, later in the story of Job, God gave him abundance of blessings. And because of his loyalty to God, we, as God's people, we should also trust in him. Because no matter what afflictions came to Job's life, he still trusts in the Lord. And no matter what may happen in our lives, we should always trust in the Lord. Because when we trust in the Lord, God will give many blessings to us, especially what He is doing right now. He is preparing a beautiful place for us. A place where there is no suffering, no crying, no pain, just pure happiness and joy. Like what it says in John 14, verses 1 to 3, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. You believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you will be also. Yes, my friends, the world is getting worse and worse every day. Mass shootings. Rising gas prices, food prices, hatred amongst people, amongst Christians, all of these things. But you know, praise God that this world is not our home. That we are just passing through. Because Jesus Christ is coming again. The next step is lean not on your own understanding. What does that mean, to lean not on your own understanding? In the New Living Translation, it says to not depend on your own understanding, or do not depend on yourself, or do not do things your own way. Because when you do things you want it to be as your plan, there is a big chance that you will get this word sidetracked. What does that mean? Being sidetracked means being distracted from a main subject or topic. Or it means getting distracted at the beginning, middle, or nearing at the end of your journey. We all been through that, correct? Sometimes we are we feel like we are ready to go straight forward to the goal that we have. 
But somewhere along the way, we tend to get distracted by so many worldly things in our own lifetime. And because we get so focused on those things, we tend to go in a different route. And thus, we get lost in our own journey, in our own track. Think about a time when you were a kid. Maybe you have been through this before, maybe not. Maybe you heard of it before. But think about a time when you were a kid, walking with your family, going into a grocery store, trying to look for some things that you need for your own cabinet, for your food cabinet, or in your um, refrigerator, or maybe there is something that you want to put in your own stomach. And so it goes on, you're trying to find these items, and somewhere in the aisle, while you're holding hands with your parents, somehow, some way, you as a kid were looking at something that looks so yummy that you want to eat it right now. Something that is so very beautiful that you want to put it in your room. Something in, something in that aisle that you want to make your friends jealous. And somehow you let go of your parents' hand and then you go to that item and just look at what it is. And somehow, within a few seconds, you couldn't find your parents. And in your head, you think about your parents, thinking, where are they? And you have these kinds of decisions, whereas you need to find your family right away. The first, the first decision is find someone who can find your family. The second one is remember the face of your parents and try to look for them. Or the third choice is you cry out their names. Mama! Daddy! And then later on you will start crying, 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 and say, Mama, Daddy, where are you? And then they will like come in towards you and say, Anak! Anubayan, what are you doing there? That's my Filipino accent. But it's not if I uh, offended <laughs> or if I did it wrong or something. But oh well. That's, how, that's what I heard from my parents. That's how they say it, actually. I don't know if that's correct. Sorry, mom, dad. <laughs> We're like that kid sometimes. When we walk with Jesus in our journey, here on earth, we will get distracted by the world. We will get distracted by the worldly things of life, the current events, the issues, and all of a sudden, we let go of Jesus' hand without knowing it. And then, all of a sudden, we feel lost in the darkness of life that we could not find Jesus. And sometimes we complain that we thought Jesus would be with us, but we were so blinded. My friends, those are Satan's words that is trying to put in your own minds. That he's trying to um, say things negative, trying to put these lies into your minds. Jesus is not here. Jesus will never be with you. My friends, that is the words of Satan lying to you. Because Jesus, as what it says in the Bible, that he will never leave you nor forsake you. 
The reason why we feel like Jesus is not there is because Satan is blinding our own eyes. But my friends, if we continue to stay faithful, even in the midst of these kinds of chaos in our lives, even if we don't know where to go, remember to look onto Jesus, who is the way and who is our bright and morning star. And, like what I said earlier, do not depend on yourself. Do not lean on your own understanding. Instead, lean onto our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As what the song says, and if you'd like to sing with me, this beautiful song, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms, I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. Because when you lean on the Lord, you are safe and secured. None of these things, none of these things on earth, like what it says there in the Bible, nothing formed against you shall prosper because you are safe and secured in the arms of Jesus. When you lean on the Lord, the path is bright because like what I said earlier, Jesus Christ is our bright and morning star. He is our light of the world. He is our light in the midst of the darkness. And when you lean on the Lord, there is no fear for the future. Like what it says in Isaiah 41 verse 10, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous, omnipotent hand. We have nothing to fear for the future except as we shall forget the way the Lord has led us and his teachings in our past history. Life Sketches of Ellen White, page 196, paragraph 2. Don't look back. Don't look at the things of the earth. Don't fear for anything. Turn your eyes on Jesus. Last one. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. What does it mean to acknowledge Him in all of our ways? What this truly means to acknowledge God is to believe and trust that the God who has been with His people, who has helped His people, and has directed His people in the past, will also do the same for you and for me. Like what He has done in the past, not only in the ancient times, but also in your past. Regardless of your age, regardless of where we come from, God has led us and He promised us that He will also lead us today and in our future. Because we tend to think of worriness. We tend to worry about our future. But my friends, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The God who has been with us in the past is the same God who is always with us, even in this place right now 
and what He is doing for us in our future. Like what it says in Jeremiah 29, 29 11, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Not anything negative, not anything that could harm you, but to give you hope and a future. Psalms 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Because He loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue Him, I will protect Him, for He acknowledges my name. Or like what I should say, or what we should say in our present day. Because they love me, I will rescue those, and I will protect those who acknowledges my name. My friends, no matter what may happen, God himself is here to rescue us. All we need to do is pray every day, sing praises to the Lord every day, open your Bible as what the song says, read your Bible, pray every day, and he will, we will grow, 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 and he will always save us and protect us from anything that could harm us. And most especially in our journey, Psalms 23, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. We will fear no evil. For you are with us. Your rod and your staff, they comfort us. You prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. You anoint us head, our head with oil. Our cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us in the days of our lives. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yes, truly, life and also the time that we have is getting short. All of these things are piling up day by day, month by month, year by year, minute by minute. But like what it says in Matthew, I believe it's 24, Jesus has predicted these things to happen, but my friends, when you stay faithful to the Lord, nothing in this world can harm us. Nothing in this world can overwhelm us. Because when you put your faith and trust in the Lord, and this is, our, this is His promise, when you go through the deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. That verse, my friends, has taught me a lot in my own daily life ever since I went through my own difficult times when I was a teenager. There were lots of things that, in my mind that I was lost. I don't know my career path. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do in my own life. And I prayed this one time in the dark of night. I opened my Bible randomly and it opened to this beautiful verse that taught me so much that no matter what may happen in my life, no matter 
how far, how tough my future would be. Our God of love and mercy is with us and is with me as well. And look where I am today. But you know, life will continue to get rough and tough even if we went, even when we reach our goals in life in graduation, in high school or college, when you get married, I hope I do. <laughs> when you get a family, when you get a house, when you get a job, life will throw so many things, so many difficulties in our lifetime. But that is our promise. When we go through deep waters, He will always be with us. Christ is a tried stone. Those who trust in Him, He never disappoints. In Christ alone. I would like to play this beautiful song, In Christ Alone. If we can uh, play the music. It's playing, but it's not um, not sound. But it's okay. You can just look at the words, because this song is my favorite. to come. 
Christ alone. We place our trust. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Because we have a God who never breaks the promises. And that we can always trust and believe in the God who is preparing a beautiful place for us. Let us all pray. Far God in heaven, we thank you so much for your love and mercy that you have bestowed upon us through your Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as a ransom for many. And we thank you, Father, for the promise that though this world is getting tougher every day, we thank you that we can always depend on you and not on ourselves, for your ways are much better and higher than our ways. Father, I pray that may you please be with each and every single one of us here who are lost in this journey. I pray that may you, our light, be a shining light in our lives and guide us along the way. May you continue to remind us that no matter what may happen, you are always there and, and that you are always with us and that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Lord, I pray that may you continue to guide us always until the day of your soon return. We thank you, Father, for your love and mercy and your grace. In Christ's worthy name we pray. Amen.